going to come because what we did, what so basically, as I mentioned in my email or whatever information I sent you, was that um, the, um, they were requesting uh, what we feel like is an administrative change. It's a minor site plan amendment to their site, but I wanted to make sure because it was an expansion of pavement that it wasn't just a staff level review. So um, we didn't. F I didn't feel like it was a full blown amendment kind of change, but I wanted it to run it by you to sort of have more of an administrative approval. So it's not officially a public hearing for the modification to this plan. So they didn't come because I just said I would present it to you, and um, they were hedging their bets, uh, hoping that you would approve <laughs> the two additional parking spaces. So that's why they're not here, and um, they felt like. Level one or two? Are they the one tens or the two forties? Or one one twenties or two forties? Do you know? Um, did it say on the plans? <laughs> no. Um, let me just pull that up. Uh, what are you talking about? If you just the give me a second. We're talking about the charging stations. Yeah. And they so there's uh, there are different kinds of stations. Charging. Chargers. Yeah, um, let's, let me just see if I have it, if he said it. Um, uh, well, I would say we don't have a city policy on it. In fact, we're grappling right now with the parking policy for the ones that the city's just put in at the Transportation Parking Commission. But we might put it in front of us to consider in the future re requiring the level two's charging stations is where we should be going. So, but is that just a um, piece of, uh, that's the charger itself. So yeah. they could replace it with, so it's not something it, that. It would, it would require running the 240 electric service to that location, which otherwise you can do it with house power. You know, it's one. Yeah. 120. It's a little separate here. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, let me look on the plan. So what they've done proposed is a 10 foot wide sort of parallel tandem parking spaces, just bumping out the outside edge of the parking lot. Um, and um, actually, that would be the, um, all it says is EV charging stations, and I don't see the, um, I don't see the power to it. So I'm just going to look on this other plan. Is that better? Oh, those are the ones. That's the one I said that we're trying to set policy on now. Um, I don't see it spelled out here, so they're just saying it's just they're just calling it to. And I can't tell by the other lines what the what utilities are going in. Well, I don't know that that's a showstopper. The point is that we don't have a policy, so I don't think we could hold them to it. I would love to encourage them to do a level two. And the fact that they're coming to us to ask for them at all is just great. So. Well, you know, I could always, um, when I take back the information provided that, I mean, if you, however you vote tonight, I can certainly say that that was put on the table. So they're they're in obviously in construction now, so they haven't put anything into the ground. So, right. um, and I think that they they would want to go to the level two. I mean, uh, okay. my impression talking is talking about one twenty versus two forty. Yeah, it? but it's out in the parking lot. I mean, it's the wiring is the same. The charging unit unit isn't though. Yeah, it's, the charging it's, unit isn't the same, but the wiring doesn't have to change. So we didn't do this by public hearing, right? No, so this isn't a public hearing, but you need, you need a motion vote. And yeah, okay. yeah. Somebody want to make that? I move we approve the two parking places requested by People's Bank and strongly urge them to use level two chargers. I'll second, second that. Thank you for having too. All in favor? None opposed, okay. Okay. So 
Now we have all things zoning, Carolyn. Okay. Take it from here. <sighs> We've got an hour and 11 minutes. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah. nah. You can go under. That's right. That's a not to exceed. It's not a goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to satellite Wayne in because he had a few <laughs> items afterwards. <laughs> we could Skype with him after. Yeah. Put him up on the big screen. No, that'd be good. Okay. So I guess the big... Um, a thing that we didn't we didn't get to talk about in December was um, the um, graphics that Kuhn Riddle did for us to sort of both illustrate and clarify some of the points relative to the design column in the um, zoning um, districts. And then also the other thing we can talk about tonight is I did have a meeting this week with Bay State Village Neighborhood Association and some. Um, Leeds Civic Association also sort of banded together. So we had another um, sort of neighborhood meeting and mm -hmm. had some conversation there too. It was mostly Q&A, um, some concerns about dividing up and, and using um, um, all available open space or open space, I guess, lots that are not um, built out. But, you know, we looked at parcels that were currently able to be subdivided and clearly they haven't been over time but um, anyway so we can talk a little bit about that but let me put the first thing um, I want to put that PDF I sent you did everybody get that um, okay. the graphics the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll just put those on the screen initially we um, just make sure I maximize that. Do you want me to turn the light off? Yeah. I think I can hand you these. Maybe I got them early. I didn't them out. Yeah. Number two, number one. <laughs> so what we did was... Um, we, it's, since you guys have had a lot of discussion both with, you know, from coming out of the public forums and just sort of internally discussions about how far down that design road and how do we address issues that um, were of concern and raised um, relative to sort of what development might look like and, um, potentially. Um, we asked them to take a look at and sort of create um, really more um, form type um, pictures of, of uh, depicting some of the standards in the in that far column, the design column. So this first one is about attaching garages, and um, this is, could be this re would relate to additions that might um, take place or um, new construction. So particularly given that um, front setbacks are being proposed to be reduced. Um, from 20 feet to 10 feet, um, there's a concern that, you know, the massing of a garage, an attached garage, is going to have a much different um, impression on the street um, the closer it is um, to, the, to the street. And then in the C district, um, there's a proposal to reduce the side setbacks just by 5 feet to sort of more mirror what's on the ground, which actually is much less than 10 feet in, in many circumstances. Um, so this is this first graphic is sort of here's what's envisioned by the ordinance, and there was a there is a um, typo here which I think Kuhn Riddle acknowledged this. We were talking about 25 percent of the fa facade, and there's a the, this discusses both 25 and 30 percent. So we just need right. to clarify um, which one, and and you all can start. I think the issue was we were debating back and forth with Kuhn Riddle about what makes sense in terms of the coverage. So, you know, it went back and forth between 25 and 30. I think that's where the confusion came up. Um, so um, we ultimately thought that maybe showing sort of what fits under this ordinance and then what, what is meant not to be the appropriate standard is on the right column. Uh, and as we go through this, we've also internally been trying to figure out how this might 
be incorporated into an overall the zoning package and so we've we've gotten a sample actually from West <coughs> Springfield about a report that was done that sort of pseudo form based code um, that they're trying in West Springfield and so we wanted we I brought an example of that I'll put it up on the screen of maybe a different way of laying out the zoning tables to make it more graphic oriented, less text and maybe more that thereby more readable. So I want to put that up there and sort of throw some ideas out too which I think would give us an opportunity of actually taking real pictures of neighborhoods and saying this is the kind of thing that you know fits the form essentially um, and maybe give three or four examples, including maybe a modern house, so that it's clear that the intent is not to encourage only right. exactly what's already on the ground, but allow flexibility and allow you know evolution of architecture and that kind of thing. As that's how neighbor how Northampton is obviously built out over time. Um, so I wanted to have that as part of the discussion too. Are there any questions about this first one, the garage and the facade and setbacks? And would it, did you guys generally feel like these are helpful? Um, I did. I, I think I was struggling initially when we were talking about it. I thought it was, it, on its face, it was a good idea, but it was worrisome potentially that we're starting, we're going to dictate architectural design. Yeah. And these graphics are just so basic in um, that they're not going to force, a, you know, an architectural design one way or the other, modern or traditional, what's already on the ground. But it's very it it's it's helpful. I mean, you read it and you understand immediately what what the zoning you know what it's trying to say. Um, the second one. Let me see if I can. Break. Although I will say about that, I mean that the, the one with the X through it. That's mm -hmm. my house. So <laughs> I mean, we have it's set the garage yeah. is set yeah. back, but we have a two car garage next to the house, and the house is from the 1860s. So. Um, obviously, the garage wasn't there then, but you know, I just that just. Wait, say that. This again? is because Your the set. Is detached and way yes. back. It's way back. This so is because the setbacks. The this setbacks is are only, getting closer this to the is road. suburban housing. This is only if it's. This is if it's an attached garage. Mm -hmm. So if it's attached, then essentially you need to be. Your, the garage should be not the front and center element of okay. the entire structure. So garage is set back or not, it's not applicable. Right, or detached is not applicable. Okay, okay. So it's I really about once you start adding a garage, it shouldn't be taking up the entire front face yeah, yeah. of your house. Because your, yeah. your house, your okay. presence is right on yes. um, the street. Right, and so, the garage is set back. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Okay. Um, so again, I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Facades of the principal structures must have a door facing the street. Um, and the um, entry of the front facade should include a covered, I'm sorry, should include a covered entry that's at least six feet deep and comprise at least 25% of the principal facade's width. Um, so, uh, let me just zoom down out a little bit. I have a question. Is it 25 or 30 percent? Or is that something we have to decide? Well, I think actually maybe this is the one where the, the 25 and 30 got mixed up. I think it's, you can discuss it. I think the original was 25 percent as the, not the original, one of the, the most recent draft says 25. 25. Yeah. Which is more stringent. Correct. Or no, this happened. Well, less stringent. Yeah. Um if it's a ranch, I mean you get some long single story ranch houses. So a twenty five foot twenty five percentage of the front, six foot wide, for the access to a ranch, some of those ranches, some of the ranch could be you know, hundred feet or longer. Well, yeah, I mean, along that line, I have a lot of problems with this second page thing, and, and one of them is what what you would do with a single story ranch. It would be a, you're you actually are in this one dictating architectural design. You're looking <coughs> really what kind of design for mm -hmm. a house. You're going to end up with all Victorian houses or things like that. Which neighborhoods are we talking about? 
Well, there are A, B, and C. All of them. So that is the entire city. Oh. Two, uh, a good portion of Sixty percent. Yeah. But another one is that the six-foot depth thing would be, um, I think, is is a lot. I mean, certainly, I think it's reasonable to have a little bit of a shelter there, but. I don't know whether we want to dictate people have to have porches, essentially, is what this is. That's the, how does this differ than what's on the books right now? Well, again, we don't have any design standards on the books. And the no. issue was to say, first of all, you know, front door facing, so there were five points. I think one of all of them, four of them had to deal with the structure itself, and the fifth one has to do with parking and how you orient or. Um, mm -hmm. Um, minimize the um, the presence of parking for particularly multifamily structures. Um, so this one, um, uh, in terms of um, porches, I think we t we started with the standard that's at the state hospital and built in the design guidelines for state hospital. So that's where the six. I think it was six by eight was the original was was the first language that we came up with, and then um, in sort of the conversations with Kuhn Riddle, we um, narrowed it down to or, or tried to um, instead of giving a dimension on both ends, look at percentage of facade um, as a as a portrayal of what's typical in the urban neighborhoods is that you've got this front facade and you have typically a covered over hang or entry area. So that's where the number came up with. I mean, it's certainly, it, you know, I think it makes sense for you all to discuss it and think about all the different iterations that it could. And then just so you know, then the, the very, at the bottom of this is the planning board has the ability to waive any any of these standards. So it is true that someone would then have to apply to the planning board if they wanted, um, you know, a two foot eave overhang to count as the front end, uh, you know, covered entry. Um, so that, you know, there is a provision to allow something that's different. But again, it does um, trigger a planning board review, which is, you know, a process in and of itself. Obviously, the, the six by eight—that's the baseline at the at the village, even yeah. even for those bungalows and so forth. Mm -hmm. And how about the twenty-five or thirty percent? Does that reflect the village design or no? Uh, that's no, that's more of sort of um, batting around, sort of how we what what's the key feature, and it's really more about how to create that sort of front entry element on the structure. I guess that seems like, uh, I guess I agree with Brandy that this seems a little, right. a little too over the line of actually telling, I mean, because that's a pretty important element of a, you know, of a design. Yeah. It, it, I don't know, it seems like it's too, I think I would agree, it, it's a little too, it seems, a, it feels a little more like you're telling them how to design something as opposed to giving them a platform which they can design with. My house is, I think, 85 feet wide, long, low ranch, and the porch would have to be 25 and a half feet wide. By six feet, so By six 300 feet. square like, foot yeah, porch. square feet, yeah. That's a, that's a big porch. Right. You could do a lot of entertaining on that porch. Totally. <laughs> Rocking chairs. I mean, I think, you know, having the door face front and having a covered entry is fine, but but the percentage, I agree with yeah. Fanny. Like that, that, right. that, that doesn't fit there are, I mean, my house looks like that one on the right. Or, you know, any yeah. cape or colonial. Exactly, yeah. yeah. With a door in the middle, probably doesn't, you know, none of them meet that 30%. But, I, mean, I strongly agree that the house should face the street. It shouldn't look right. like it's in there sideways. Uh -huh. Because the ones that are on, there's one on Maynard Road, I think. And, and there's a couple on West Hampton Road, and it, it doesn't look right. There are a few in, in you know, yeah. on Union Street, I can think of a couple of examples anyway that are, you know, 1700s homes. They're, they're beautiful, right. yeah. Um, our, our our Maryland's old house, I think. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I love <laughs> So, I mean, you know, that was the first thing that came to mind. This came out of the Zoning Revisions Committee as a recommendation. My first reaction was, well, there are some historic homes that do face sideways, but with that provision, I guess the typical orientation is front, and I guess given the provision of allowing planning board to approve something that's not right. that, right. you know, allows for that. So I don't, you know, 
Um, if you have a really skinny lot and you have to put the door in the front, you have to go through the entire house. Whereas if you put your door partway to the back, you can cluster around the hallway there. It gives you a lot. I mean, yeah. you know. Well, and nobody says you have to use the front door. It just has to be there. <laughs> no, right. I'm serious. Right. I mean, well, we don't go through the front door. Right. Yeah, but you design the inside of the house in some relationship to the front door. But if you're talking about something where there are exceptions, then uh, that's a different story because then you're looking at the well, particulars. The, I mean, the frontage, I mean, these are, this is new construction. I understand. So the frontage for new construction is going to be, I think, what was the number was? 50, 75 feet? So. I'm sorry, say that again. The, we're talking, because since these are for new, con these guidelines are for new construction, and the frontage for new construction, I can't remember what the width of the lot has to be. 50, yeah. 50 feet. So these aren't going to be. You know, super narrow. Super narrow. Right. Not yeah. these are going to have to satisfy yeah. the frontage in order to be built in the first place. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that doesn't mean you have to bring it inside of the house. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Fifty feet is pretty narrow. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm 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 always fine with the way. What was it? Six foot depth, eight foot wide. Was that what we were? I mean, that's to me a more realistic number. Yeah. The percentage in this. Uh, Franny said you have an eighty foot long wide house. That's a yeah. twenty foot front door yeah, yeah. I guess I like identifying the elements without going to the next step of identifying the actual size of the elements right. well I think you must have a door you must have an attached garage I think that's <laughs> yeah. work to hear it doesn't if the intent is to keep uh, ranch houses out of you are <laughs> a B and C then this will work I think but, yeah. well I don't know that I've I've heard from anybody that that's the intent I mean, I think the intent is to have flexible architecture. Oh, he was I hope he was joking. <laughs> but what is the what is the intent of those particular parameters? I don't know if sarcasm is exactly what I intended. Yeah. It's there. Yeah. What is this? A, what is this intended to address? What concern? Sorry if you well, said I, that. I think the issue is um, sort of the relationship to the street and pedestrian orientation. When you're urban, you know, urban mm -hmm. character. You, there's much more um, interface within the neighborhood and, and activity at the street level. So that porch sort of allows that uh -huh. transitional space essentially from public to private right. right. But we could have that without, without a dimensional requirement. Perhaps. Right, you could say covered entry. Yeah. And um, a certain depth, would you and have this <coughs> six foot depth? Well, I mean, maybe not the width, but the depth. I mean, right now it says, you know, uh, front facade that is at least six foot deep and comprises at least 25%. So we got rid of the 25% and just said a covered entry. Do we, do you, do we need the depth? And if you have, almost by default, if you have a covered entry and you have a three foot door, you're going to oh, need, you have a three and you foot. open the door and you're going to stand on a stoop to get in, you're going to need five or six feet by default anyway. Um, Our door opens in. <laughs> unless your door opens in. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> Um, so maybe because of that, because it, by default you almost need five or six feet, you don't need to dictate that depth and just say covered entry, Yeah. front door faces the front. Mm -hmm. Yep. Deb. I, I feel like I'm, we're going to be defending these numbers and, and if, unless we've got a really good reason for wanting a number, it's like you said, it's going to happen mm -hmm. at right. that dimension. And so I think yeah. we should reserve that for when we really want. So maybe take out the numbers, but show examples of covered entries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this came up in um, as a, this one we discussed before, but sort of think giving a graphic representation um, makes sense. Parking for more than five cars must be distributed on the site to minimize the impact of neighborhood character. This can be accomplished by small grouping of spaces surrounded by landscaping or parallel parking along a narrow driveway to sort of mimic an alley. And I think, um, so this sort of shows those two examples. Mm -hmm. So you have, you're breaking up the parking so you're not having this huge field. Um, and we all know of examples of where currently that has not been the case and it makes a huge difference to the character of the yeah. neighborhood. So. Um, so 
this is really just um, describing in picture what the setbacks are um, for principal structures versus the um, garage structures, and also sort of gets back at that that scaling of of garage to to frontage. But I think the the main idea here was just to um, help represent. Um, you know better what we're talking about, and I think we'll talk when we look at the examples um, of sort of how we might reformat the tables instead of sort of the the chart. Mm -hmm. That um, I feel like looking at these other examples and having everything sort of maybe a little bit of text on the side, but mostly graphics will make it much more readable. And mm -hmm. so after two years of working on the chart, no. <laughs> Got to be flexible, yeah. on the job. <laughs> This one I like. I mean, this is straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the idea of the graphical representation. Mm -hmm. But my main objection to this set of plans is that they used the wrong principle. They misspelled principle throughout the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm embarrassed for Jim Riddle. Hey, you know what? They did a lot of work very quickly for us. <laughs> can, um, the, uh, can the glazing requirement? Is, does anybody have any issue with that? Um, I'm thinking about, you know, uh, people that want to build beyond stretch code and, and want, you know, maybe that's the north side of the building. And um, I'm just wondering, is that a requirement that we need? Won't people put in windows? I mean, I'm... I'm what I've seen there's, for example, on Florence Road, there's a great house. Well, no, it's actually the exact opposite. It's a great example of bad glazing. They put a second floor on a ranch and put two windows in the entire second floor facing the street. And it, it's really an odd looking. Makes a blank really, wall. Yeah, it looks like a, look, look, yeah, it looks yeah. like a, basically a huge wall. Um, so my hope is, is this the one, the one you're talking mm -hmm. about? Yeah. Devin? That, um... So this was thrown in there, actually. This is sort of really meant for a discussion because we were concerned that it might be going into that territory where you guys were reticent to sort of mm -hmm. enter. Mm -hmm. So it's really, this could be just a placeholder for further discussion, you know, after, maybe down the road if we do need to take the next step or maybe if we do a pattern book or something that's a guideline but not a standard, we might wrap some of these kinds of things in there. But they went ahead and put this in here as an example, and I thought I would just, you know, attach it as for discussion's sake, but also, you know, just to sort of, does it make sense to have something now, or should that really be something that we look to down the road? With all of these, are you, there are principles that are trying to be accomplished, and articulating those principles might make the reasons mm -hmm. for the things that follow have greater clarity, and that would include a good articulation of why it seems important to have a certain amount of opening in uh, in the street-facing part of uh, of, of housing. Uh, <clears throat> because if, if there's not a principle there, then the then the objective is harder for people to understand. Yeah, I I think that this is a reasonable thing to address. I just don't know whether the numbers make sense or not. And that would require some study and some e experimentation. Well, this was based on, I mean, Kuhn Riddle was the one. Well, they I can't spell. I don't know if they can yeah. do math either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it also, I mean, would it uh, prohibit or would it discourage quick, cheap construction? Because isn't a lot cheaper to build a big solid wall than this to put windows in? Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't want a big solid wall. Yeah, uh, even if it is north facing. Yeah. And just to, I want to reiterate what Anne said. I think that's so true. Like I, I feel like I'm still learning. Like I know, I know what I know what looks good, but I don't always know why it looks good in planning. You know, I just don't because I'm not a planner or an architect. So I think it's really helpful. I mean, anyone who's a who's has is using an architect will understand and be able to explain to them. But if they don't, these this can seem so random and, and weird and right. frustrating to people, maybe. So if it's explained why it's important and the difference it makes, I think that could be really helpful. Okay. 
And this would be the right principle. Spell correct. Homonyms are hard. Let's face it. Yeah, this principle would be the right one. But I mean, you, somebody's going to have to sit, sit down and, and verify that it's reasonable. You know. Is that a 50 15 percent. square foot window, uh, 600 or you know, 600 square foot front of the house would be six windows. You know, and that, that sounds reasonable. Did they go over any of these numbers with you, or did they just? Say, oh yeah, no, we sat down. We sat down a couple of times and just went through. So was that 15 percent an architectural guideline yeah. that they follow yeah, yeah. based on? Yeah, basically. Okay. Good, good principles. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, this it makes sense that you know on the right, it's it's less than 15 percent. You know, by what? What is that? Is that eight percent? Is that seven? You know, and and so I don't know what that what that number should be, um, yeah. but I, I like the idea maybe of guidelines uh -huh. versus saying it has to be. I think as much as possible we should stay away from numbers. So you're saying you're arguing that this shouldn't be included this round, and maybe think about this as sort of more of a guideline or pattern book kind of thing. Right. And is that what? It, but then I heard. I thought I also heard that maybe this might be a good one to. I, I mean, I like it. I think it's. I just. I. I don't know that. You want to know more why fifteen yes. percent before right. you make a decision. Right. Okay. If at the beginning of each one, it, you know, the sustainable Northampton plan has found that fifteen percent, based on blah blah blah, is the recommended. You know, glazing for a front facade. Okay, great. That's where you got the baseline, and that's why. But to just throw a number out there and say this is why it's it's hard. I mean, there's other details like the door isn't necessarily glazed. A lot of doors don't have any glass in them at all, and some of them have very little. And does that, but it counts as an opening visually. So is it really glazing that you're worried about? You know, it's a lot of screwy details here. Yeah. You know, and you and you can use approximately, which turns it into a guideline, not a. Which is 13 and 16. Yeah, because it's going to say there's no magic number. Yeah. So, and that's true for most of this stuff. There's no magic number. You're just yeah. trying to yeah, yeah. set it. But you know when it's not enough. Like Stephen was saying, you look at that one and you, you can immediately tell that's it needs to be more. But, and so I don't know what that threshold is or how you define that. <laughs> Um, so that's the that's the last of what um, we asked them to do and what they did for us in this. You got to back up one, I think. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. uh, where's the one with the tower? Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, you, this is the one I think that was um, the language had been in there, but you all were were, had, were concerned about making sure that this would still allow, you know, some architectural ingenuity and, and differences within the neighborhood. So I think what we were trying, what we encouraged them to do was represent something that, that you know, the form may be different, but, you know, the scale is, um, is not, you know, the scale has to be consistent, even mm -hmm. though the, the actual other elements might be different. Um, so I don't know if this goes far enough. Or too far. Or no, I mean, I is it that's it's general, but gets yeah. the point. I mean, I'd say you could you'd almost use that similar language on the glazing, mm -hmm. and say must have adequate amount of glazing on the front facade. And and draw one facade with one tiny little window and put an X through that, and you know not adequate, and just give them a guideline. I mean, this you can you can tell what they're looking for, but at the same point, there's there aren't any dimensions, no figures, uh -huh. no, uh -huh. which I I'm more comfortable with than saying. Yeah, if you went back to the, the, the like Mark and Taylor, the previous one and just and just said, you know, it needs to right. look like you know those the things that are surrounding it, you know, then it may, then it gives it a lot more flexibility as long right. as it meets without having to say it's a certain yeah and allows them to be creative. Okay. I mean, I, I think like Jen was saying, it's one of those things where you'll know it when you see it whether it fits or it doesn't fit. Right, but then we have no teeth at all. Like then we, uh, uh, what do we do with that if we don't have a specific guideline then. Or a specific requirement, then this yeah, is all useless, I mean, I right? Think, I mean, or or not enforceable, I guess. Well, right, and then if you're, you know, the first cut review is going to be at a staff level, so 
you know, if you have specific numbers, then staff can make that decision. Yes, you're, you can go forward with the pro project. No, this needs planning board review. So the few, the, the items that have no, you know, no, you know, the 15 percent can be a range, I think, but if someone, if, we, if there isn't some number, that's just an example, let's take that one, you know, someone has 5 percent, but there's no number. Right. You know, yeah. I suppose someone could always say, well, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm going to appeal the staff decision, and that, that could happen too, I guess. But, but that, could you, so that you, you couldn't fall back to saying, well, it doesn't fit the block face? Um, Not the same way you can when yeah, you're Yeah, I number. mean, I think it's probably, this one might be easier because it's about, it's scale and massing, and you can kind of show that in, in mm -hmm. you know, someone could prove, try to prove their point to you. Whereas glazing is you know, specific to structure that I think if you, you know, you can also calculate, you can say show me the percentage of your window openings or what have you, and that's a little bit of a different thing than scale and massing. And yes, yeah, some of this is judge is going to be judgment, yeah, obviously. But when the, a site plan comes before the planning board, I mean, I don't recall that we really know they're showing the height of the surrounding buildings. Is that true? Um, well, in so numbers, but not really sort of visually. as a, yeah, in, visually. In yeah. numbers, they do. Well, right, because we have, but we also have a maximum. The other thing is we have height limits. So mm -hmm. someone is allowed to do, um, you know, if the zoning has a specific um, maximum standard, then someone can build up to that, and the board couldn't turn them down just because they're still within that height limit. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so this mm -hmm. is more, um, I, <clears throat> when, um, I think that's what also makes this a little bit more difficult, but this is really focused on if there's going to be anything that's, this construction over 2,000 square feet is going to trigger site plan. So automatically it's going to be coming to the planning board anyway. Let's say if you're b building a tower, that to me, um, I'm assuming that represents, you know, some number of units that's going to trigger already site plan approval. Mm -hmm. So the board can look at that in the context. If there's a standard that says, you know, you have to fit into the block, the character of the block face, then you're going to be asking the applicant to prove that they do that. Mm -hmm. um, so they might need to um, adjust the design so that it's not so much a tower bumping up above everyone else, but maybe it's a more linear kind of configuration. Um, okay. It's one thing to establish this as a zoning principle, but normally this kind of thing doesn't come before the planning board. I mean, if you get a, a house, it's up to the building inspector. Or, Right. Any kind of anything now that's a single family house. I mean, any we don't have design standards, so nothing that's by right, or particularly a single family home certainly doesn't now, and, and actually wouldn't come to the board anyway because single family homes uh, are, you know, sacred cows in Massachusetts. So you can basically build anything. If you, you had uh, one of these. A, a, a piece of property in one of these old neighborhoods where there actually are three-story houses, single-family three-story houses, and you decided to build essentially a one-story house with a three-story tower. Isn't that what you'd have over there? And would, and would that matter, I guess, is my question. Yeah. Because it's a little hard in some of these cases to see where, where you actually would end up with anything like that. But I could sort of see in a place where you already have those. Right. It, would be, it would be out of scale, but it would be inside the yeah. box in some fashion. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's two things. One is how it fits into the neighborhood. The other one is how it fits in with itself. And you could just separate out that <coughs> thing there, and you would say that doesn't look, it, doesn't, it looks out of balance. It, well, yeah, no, no, I, I, the neighbors. I, I mean, I don't know. That's a, yeah, but, but I don't. I don't have any problem with this one. Yeah. I'm mostly worried about the porch. <laughs> I just want to have room for my rocking chair. <laughs> so it's going to be really hard when you have as much variety as you have in these neighborhoods to know how these things are going to fit in because it's so eclectic. Right. Well, what what wins say? <clears throat> say we have a height restriction of 60 feet. But the the uh, the lot 
is in a neighborhood with the buildings are all 30. So even though the zoning says you could do 60, these guidelines, do they have the same force of zoning? Because they'll say it has to fit in, so it has to be approximately 30 feet? Well, I wouldn't, so I would say that it doesn't necessarily have to be the same. I think there's other ways that you can make something that's taller fit in. And so there would be sort of two distinct um, evaluation. So I wouldn't, you know, if everything is, let's say, 30 feet and you have a, I mean, that's an extreme example. We're not going to have that at all. But yeah, um, I, don't, I mean, I use 60 because I know that's what downtown is. I don't think right. out in the or URA it's 60 no, no, feet. No. I think it's like it's, 40. It's 40. Yeah. And then I think in C, it's, if we said 45. Right. Um, and there are, you know, so I think that, you know, you could, um, I think there are ways that you can have go up to 45 feet, but still have it um, consistent, you know, make the form and massing fit with a neighborhood, even if you've got heights that, you know, you might scale, you might have the peak or something else that's higher, but not have an entire, you know. Yeah. And then you are going to see neighborhoods that are, I mean, I know there's neighborhoods in URC or Ward 3 that, you know, look like this now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. they're right. bungalows mm -hmm. next to Victorians, mm -hmm. next to Craftsman. You know, and well, and even apartment buildings. And next, and with an apartment building thrown in there, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's not necessarily every neighborhood has got uniformity, and right. then this one exactly. thing's going to stick out. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and so in a sense, this is a little cartoonish, because I don't know that, <laughs> you know, it's sort of an extreme example. <clears throat> still agree. Yeah, I, mean, I still agree with it. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. Design standards are a lot easier on something like Village Hill, where it's all new construction. Right. Like you have a chance then to make it what you want. Right. In an older like like neighborhood, you can't do that as easily. Yeah. So those are the six shots, basically, that... I don't know, does Owen, yeah. do you want to speak? <laughs> Stay in there for a while. I know. So you want to speak to this specifically? Actually, to what we're talking about? Agenda. But I uh, did want to speak to the URC revisions. Mm -hmm. Because I've been having some meetings with some constituents, and uh, it seems as though the URC uh, guidelines or with the zoning changes do fit with a lot of what URC is now, but not all of it. And uh, especially the edge near uh, Henry Street, there are some really deep lots that. Um, could end up with a lot greater density than uh, I think is contemplated mm -hmm. under the URC zoning. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that the uh, association sent a letter to the council mm -hmm. and asked also to the planning board, if not to the planning mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, if, if the URC goes through like it is, I think we're also going to ask for a map change such that uh, portions of Henry Street, Palmore Terrace, and possibly the Bridge Street become URB. And uh, if the planning board wants to avoid that, uh, that map change discussion, you might want to revisit the UC, right, uh, zoning requirements. I also wanted to note that uh, there's some conflicting information on the internet about what this meeting is actually about. And uh, I wish that uh, the chair and staff take better care about uh, publishing the agendas. Thank you. I don't know what that means. Yeah. To the I'd, website. I'd just like to speak to it. Um, that um, that the, the posted agenda on the OPD website, um, actually, once I've researched it a bit, I, I think it has the agenda from last month's meeting for this discussion and doesn't mention um, the, that you guys are going to talk about the URs. I, at the Ward 3 meeting the other night, Fred, who just left, um, he said, oh, they're going to talk about the URs. And I'm like, 
No, that's not because you know I've been following it, and that there's a there are a number of residents who are also interested in being part of the discussion. I said, you know, all right. So I went home and I pulled the 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 agenda off the website, and it doesn't mention the the um, the UR. So I didn't let people know that this discussion was happening tonight, mm -hmm. and only today did I get forwarded uh, Fred's. Uh, which is the the Mailchimp version of the agenda? That clearly says this th this discussion was going to happen, and you know I I wasn't happy about it because there's a number of people who really would have wanted to be here and listen in on the discussion. So that's what Owen was referring okay. to. So two you, different agendas. The, dis the discussion we just had on the on the design guidelines. That's that's the discussion. We're well, I believe you're you're talking about the URs here, right? Yeah, this is clearly about you, the, the, you yeah. know, a, a informal discussion mm -hmm. about UR A, B, and C, you know, which. But that's not what's listed on the OPD website right. on the okay. agenda. So. Okay. Yeah, I just did pull the um, agenda and the. Um, Old, the new zoning board, but the old planning board items for zoning changes did go on the um, posting for the city clerk and the MailChimp, the, which is what we send out from our office, had the updated agenda. So, you know, I apologize for the mix-up of the of the agendas, um, but um, and I don't actually know how that happened so sorry and, and if there were public comment held at the beginning of the meeting I would have put that out there so you guys could discuss it and figure out how to proceed mm -hmm. and you guys went right into the meeting so I so you've had a meeting discussing you know stuff and right. I guess it's you guys can figure it out okay it's a great discussion, by the way. <laughs> All right, well, I apologize. So, I don't know how we, how we respond to that if we need to, if there was an interest, if there would have been an interest uh, had it been posted correctly, um, if we should go through, if we now have to go through this again to allow those people who want to be heard regarding the guideline changes, proposed changes, to, to at least come to the meeting. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, you know, the, it's, there were specific items from the December meeting that were posted as zoning changes and then the ones that you actually did discuss in December. Um, and then the, the, the agenda that went out on Tuesday, um, I think Tuesday or Monday, which is 48 hours ahead, had this revised um, or different agenda, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so you can certainly, um, you know, I mean, this discussion is clearly not over. Right. Um, so you can, you know, vote. To, we don't have any permits for the next meeting. So, oh, really? Um, the other thing we can do is you've asked to sort of have some other changes. There were still things that I didn't get to in terms of the design that we can certainly put on for the 24th and sort of you'll be doubling back anyway because we could have potentially either have a new iteration of Kuhn Riddle stuff or more mock up of um, possible graphic changes and sort of layout changes, which will then obviously wrap in the same discussions about design. I mean, maybe we could do that. There's five, six, you know, six guideline changes that we looked at. And if we're going to look at half a dozen more at the next meeting, and we could revisit <coughs> the meeting. Yeah, I wouldn't say they were new. And th this isn't really new from what you guys have discussed at previous meetings. Right. It's just the graphical representation. Right. What we talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but in terms of looking at how we might lay out the zoning ordinance, you know, um, the other piece of it is sort of adding in elements that you guys talked about and wrapping that in. So that will necessarily bring it up again. Okay. Um, okay. 
Well, also, and we also we haven't voted on anything. These are just this is right. an informal discussion. There's right. no votes taken. There's right. all this stuff's going back. So this, it's not as if this is the only opportunity anybody had to comment on it. No, but I understand well, if if there's confusion, it's, then it's, people oh, sure. have to talk about it, then they couldn't. Yeah, I think some of the design guidelines wouldn't would apply to other districts besides U R A B and C. I mean, if it's if it's legitimate to require a certain amount of glazing on the front of a house, why shouldn't it be in uh, suburban residential or whatever? You know. Right. I mean, the, but the, what's on the table now, what you guys have been discussing for the last six months or whatever, has been the A, B, and C. So that's where we're yeah. targeting the design standards at this point. Well, it, it seems to me that then that we should not talk about it anymore and make it clear on the agenda and talk about it the next meeting when the public would have a chance to speak. Sounds fair to me. Is there some way to create a first shot minor example of how you would shift this from this this format to the design format so that in the discussion of that that might become clearer as well so that people have an idea where this might yeah be yeah, going. yeah yeah that's what I was thinking that I, I started to muck around with this format but it didn't get a lot done so you know I could throw it up now or, you know, wait till we can discuss it in further detail and make sure that the right agenda is posted with the clerk as opposed to the wrong one. Well, I don't think if you have a, uh, an example, I don't think, I mean, that's a visual review of, of what the chart's going to look like, uh, the table's going to look like. I don't think that's a specific discussion about A, B, or C. That's just how you know the graphics and the yeah. narratives are going to work together so i don't i don't see the harm in reviewing that yeah no and i also think we were possibly going to get carolyn's review of the meetings which i see as appropriate right okay <coughs> so should we hang on to these then for the next meeting yeah probably yeah yeah I just wanted to check one other thing on the hmm? <laughs> Where are we? Carolyn's pulling something up to look at. An example. No, um, Mr. Nash, that's Mr. Nash, right? Mr. Nash brought up another point about public comment period at the beginning of the meeting. Um, the city council does that, the school committee does that, planning board in Ithaca, New York does it. I mean, a lot of places do. It's something that I suggested when I became chairman, and I was, I guess, shouted down. <laughs> and it does. It is difficult to control, but it is, I think, an important part of a public meeting. This would be in lieu of the public comment that comes with any particular. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. This is. Do you have anything? get up there and talk mind? about anything, any issue. I, hopefully, it would have something to do with the planning board. But that's the problem. Yeah. In a very limited. problem. Not have they're anything they're to do with quite the planning board. limited, and it's it's an. I think generally it, it's from seven to seven thirty or. Something like that. People would have three minutes. I mean, it's a pain to talk about a lot of ways. What's on the agenda, or to talk about whatever they want. Whatever they want. I, it's not that I, it's a pain, or I'm objecting to it. I just think that there's no way it would be within the purview of the planning board. I mean, you see public comment even on the on the projects that are before us. So often are you know issues outside of the purview of the planning board. Yeah, 
but that, I can see that's the, know, the nature city council. of that city council's right. job. That might be more applicable than, than planning. I think we're so narrow what our focus is to allow people to discuss issues. It, it sounds like you'd set it up that 80% well, of the I'm time to talk about something that we couldn't enforce anyway. You can put limits on it if you want, but I'm saying that it, it's done a lot of planning boards. Right. Do do that. Also, I want to say that this is a very informal place. If either one of them had interjected at any time, we would have heard from them. Right. I think it's very disingenuous for them to have both sat here and pretended like we were not going to right. listen to them if they wanted to say something. Or they could have brought it up to you or Carolyn before right. the meeting even started. Right. Uh, so I just well, I think that's important. They weren't around when I suggested it umpteen years ago. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 there's a, another issue with how they, uh, their attitude toward it was, didn't have anything to do with my suggesting this. It just reminded me about it. Right. Well, I'm not, I'm not countering that. I, I have a different issue in that I want the public comment related to the project mm -hmm. rather than all up front. Right, so. and, I, mm -hmm. and I think that, we, I think I, as being on boards that did have public comment at the beginning, you know, it would be three minutes, yes, but you could have 30 people who decided that was the day they wanted to come and say something. And so yeah, you know, it's, you, it's, it's a, a completely open-ended process. Yeah. And then, I'm and as, as Devin said, I don't want, you know, it would be bad for people to state their piece and then leave before we even started discussing it because yeah. A lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, we don't get to something till nine or ten, and somebody's gonna say, "Oh, I can't stay that late. I'm just gonna state my piece and leave." And we might have addressed their issue. We might want to discuss the issue with them. The mm -hmm. the applicant may want to discuss the issue with them. Other people in the audience might want to. And so I think we'd really have to have a discussion about it. Like, what what are we gonna get out of it? What are, what are we gonna gain by doing something like that? And what are we gonna lose? Well, I think more than that actually is the public hearing law. And I think, you know, people, if you have an open-ended item, and I think what you're referring to really is people get up at the front and say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna um, say everything I hate or love about the project that's coming on at 9 p.m. You can't technically open a public hearing till the stated advertised time. Mm -hmm. And by allowing someone to speak to that, then you've opened the public hearing at a time that's not allowed by statute. Well, that, that's, a, that's a legitimate point, certainly. I and the applicant might not even be right there because the right. applicant hasn't even shown up. Yeah, I think too in the public comment we don't limit public comment to three minutes a person or whatever. Yeah. You know, like some boards we let them go, and so. Well, that depends on the chairman. I know, I, I know. Um, <laughs> but I, I think, yeah, I think it's more prudent to have those comments be, you know, legal issues aside. I think it's more beneficial to have. I mean, one, one thing you might be able to do is in a, in a setting like tonight, whether you don't have any permits um, and you're just having open discussion, if you wanted to take the first, you know, 10 minutes, you could have that as part of the agenda for any night that you don't have public hearings or something. And then so it's not necessarily every night you have open comment, but, you know, on January 24th, there aren't any permit hearings right. either. So, you know, before launching into this, you could allow whoever comes probably from more three to skip their piece and um you know whoever else yeah if you wanted to do it that way and sort of as a compromise um but i i think it would be very complicated and difficult to enforce when you do have public hearings that you have a session at the beginning because you're not going to be able to have an issue with that so so in two weeks we meet we don't have any well, I, I, yeah, I have an issue with that, but I think that the people would have to be able to plan to come, and I'd, I'd suggest we not do the experiment. We should, we can discuss the pros and cons of it, and maybe do a little bit more research on what to do in other places. Or well, also because it's how a they approach, I don't know about other places in Massachusetts <coughs> how they approach the quasi-judicial rules and the open meeting rules and stuff would be vary from state to state. And it would change the, what do we call them, the bylaws of the, the planning board has our own set of rules that govern our meetings. And the rules, I think, are very explicit that said there is no open discussion beforehand that only people can speak to are the permits that are before us or the matters that we're discussing. Mm -hmm. It says that, that? Oh, yeah. It says that the ones were, that, you know, technically we reapprove every year. So if we want to do something like that, I think we would want to take a minute to actually look at the rules of the planning sure. board. Sure. Yeah. Which are very explicit in 
I'm, I'm not suggesting we vote on it tonight. No, no, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, actually. Sorry. I think most so of those rules just are saying, apply to when you when you actually have a permit to discuss that. No, but I think they 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 I think I, they explicitly say we do not have open comment for anything. I, I have to go look at it. It's been a while. I have to say I don't want to have to sit here and listen to somebody complain about it. The fact that his sewer backed up in 1979 and the city didn't do anything about it. You know. Right. So what I'm saying, so I guess I'm agreeing with you. Instead of saying let's try it in two weeks, I would say we'd have to look at the rules that govern our procedures. Well, for think, example, one of the things we the can do though. in our procedures that, that city council and school committee can is we can respond to somebody. Right. Not only can we respond to them, we can we can terminate their their time. So if the chair decides that a member of the public who's speaking is out of order, as the chair, you can cut them off where at the right. school committee and the city council they don't have that privilege they don't actually respond if you watch a city councilor's planning board meeting during that open hearing time open just uh, open whatever you call it comment. open comment yeah. the, the city council and the planning board and the city council and the school committee sit there silently and do not respond because they're not allowed to so uh, that's what do we which which set of rules do we follow do we engage people who might want to do it do we not I, so I think it's if we're going to do it, I think it, 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 it opens up enough questions that I'd rather not have an experiment in two weeks, but rather let's look at the rules. Just set it up better. And, and there's an important distinction. They, they are elected officials. We are volunteers. And I, I think that's an important distinction to make. You know. Well, but it's not true for, I mean, transportation, parking, many other commissions are volunteer with open comment. So. But, but, I mean, but I don't think it's necessarily required in the same way that it is with elected officials. I mean, my, that's my own personal feeling. Just elected officials are elected by the public we're not those so are also we, policy boards and you guys are a permit granting board so <clears> in that I mean that sort of goes back to the public hearing thing but you know the, as policy or I mean you do you're obviously discussing policy now so maybe it makes sense to um, think about rules during those times but it is very different than when for a permitting permit granting board Periodically, we have discussions like we had tonight, and this came up uh, when we were discussing um, when the folks from Round Hill were here. Well, and from what? From Round Hill. There are mm -hmm. a couple of people from Round Hill here. And I know that we, when we say it's a discussion on the board, that we're not necessarily, that we're not taking public comments at the time. And maybe that's a place where we could have some flexibility because we, Mark has actually never denied somebody the right to right. speak when they wanted to, even though we say we're not taking public comment. So right. maybe that's one area where we could be more flexible, even though it's just supposed to be a board discussion if people are sitting here listening and they don't, they feel like, well, you know, there was a public forum three weeks ago. I couldn't come to that. I'm here now. That feels like a very appropriate place for us to, to take comments mm -hmm. if people want to be heard. Right. Um, and I, but you, I mean, you always do. Right. It, it, we haven't, we haven't really change the rule on that as I understand it. Right. And you did tonight as well. Right. Well, <laughs> tonight, I mean, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't, there's not a, it's just an open, informal discussion. I mean, this is about as informal as, as we're going to get. So we're not, like Stephen said, we're not voting on anything. We're not, this is going to be a long, drawn out discussion. Um, well, and also, though, I mean, as Jen said, though, you don't want people showing up three meetings later to get mad at us for something we did. Because once we voted on a permit, mm -hmm. it's done. Right. Mm -hmm. And once the appeal process is over, the right. <laughs> coming in telling us that we did something that they didn't agree with or didn't like, it's not as if, like the city council, they can re create a new ordinance. They can reopen a discussion. They can, city council, school committee can do the same thing. We, we can't open up our right. hearing again. Right. And I think that just is frustrating to people to think that they're responding in a way that could be could be re that we could respond to right, their right. criticisms when we clearly yeah. can and they just don't understand that because the process is complicated right. okay. so maybe next time in two weeks we just we i'll open up and just say this is an informal discussion jump on in if you want to we're not voting on anything we're not you know we're just in the middle of a process and you have comments that are applicable we're welcome to hear it but it could have saved them a lot of time if they said that at the beginning and we could yeah, have pushed it off. If they had just said, we didn't know about this, can you push it off right. two weeks? Yes. We would have pushed it off for two weeks right. rather than waiting until we were done talking about it and then saying, now we're mad at you. Right. It was a little <laughs> disingenuous, I think. Okay. That being said, you want to walk us through this? Uh, just quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve minutes. Um, yep. The good thing is we're still meeting legally because it was posted as a meeting. 
Um, so this is really just sort of the format that we're looking at. So these photographs uh, above aren't in Northampton, but you know, if we think about having a description of the, of the district here and then some examples of character that is representative of the district and potentially put in, you know, modern structure or something that, that shows that, you know, we're not afraid of, you know, new stuff. But then I think the thing that I really like about this is having sort of that graphic, and this is maybe where we would use Kuhn Riddle, on the side here with, uh, with as much detail as we can about setbacks and things like that. So everything is sort of defined in one place, and you may or may not want to read more detail over here. And then maybe the back side of this. So maybe it's a two-page for each zoning district. Maybe the back side has, here are all the things that are allowed by special permit or require site plan approval. Well, so the question up. is, I would like this yeah. or that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. The layout is terrific. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's another version of, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't know if we would, you know, we do have SketchUp in-house, but we, it requires interns. I don't know if we could go, you know, this far or if we have enough, um, if we need to. Yeah, but this is just sort of. Can we just steal it from Portland? What's that? Yeah, Can we just steal it from Portland? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we, we could steal from other places. But I think, you know, Wayne and I had this discussion, well, does that mean we go back and read, you know, structure the other districts we've already dealt with? And yeah, maybe we would at some point. Um, but I, I guess what we're thinking more is, if there's a better way to do it, and now that we're getting into design, we may as well just bite the bullet. And, yeah. Do it right. right, and so maybe it's going to take a little more time, and maybe it will keep us from the threats about you know watch out for uh, map zone requests if you go through the zoning change because right. maybe people will actually understand the characteristics better and understand sustainable Northampton better, and um, so. Could you scroll back up because there's a, a house there with a porch. That <laughs> yeah. Two hundred percent of the front. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually the side. That's a, I love it. It's a covered <laughs> carport. Yeah. Well, wait. Isn't there a porch on the front too? Though. <laughs> There's like, like a wraparound. Wrap like a wraparound. For the two hundred percent. Two hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, if that isn't architectural design, I don't know what I know. is. I, I think this is great. I mean, for me, when I just because of what I do. For work, you know, reading the charts, I understand all the setback stuff and so forth. But a lot of people are, yeah. they 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 need that graphic representation because they can they just can't picture it. Right. And I think this is this is great. And the way you set it up, and maybe on the back you say, "Here's all the special permit stuff." Yeah. That's. I mean, to me, I think that's a home run. Well, I guess maybe that's the benefit of taking so long to implement the zone. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. find better ways yeah. of doing yeah. things. No hasty decisions. <laughs> right. I mean, this one's yeah. So I guess the other piece of it is, you know, instead of hurrying to get this through council, which obviously um, sounds like it might bike backfire in at least one district, um, <laughs> you know, take as much time right now to get, you know, reorganize a little bit, maybe think a little bit more about those graphics and the design, and then, um, so, you know, it might take another month or two or whatever before it gets introduced. Small price to pay. Yeah, I, um, as we move in t to talking about design, I just want to say I, I, get, I get cold feet. I, I want the town to be as odd and eclectic and different in its neighborhood and its building. And, and so I really like the examples and I really love the lot prescribed to, to reveal the things that are zoning yeah. code mm -hmm. yeah. I don't I don't want to go to the bottom one further you know the, the less I can right. do to image the building the better the happier okay. I am okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's just like, me that's only that's just one opinion yeah, I, mean, yeah. I agree I no think, I think that makes sense you know mm -hmm. where it is versus what it is yeah it's I think more about okay more what we mm -hmm. should be thinking about when you pull that pull that up so that you see the thing on the bottom But well, maybe the thing on the bottom could be the blocks that Kuhn really just did looking yeah. at garages. It's right. just yeah. looking at scale, yeah. and it's yeah. not yeah. really. Yeah. That doesn't do much for me. No, no, but it's it's just yeah. looking at the scale there, trying to get okay. get a hint. So that porch is way too big. <laughs> 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 
I don't That's think like an station wagon, too. Or, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> SUV in front of the house. <laughs> Oh, I got wood grain on the side. Yeah. I'm kind of trying to think oh, of what Catherine <laughs> said about some of this stuff. Oh, my God. Okay. It, what else you got, Carolyn? I want, I want to go back and I want to withdraw my request for a public uh, comment period <laughs> because of the legal issues about addressing stuff. So yeah. that's a done deal. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's the right thing to do. Maybe you should run for city council. Pardon? Maybe you should run for city council. Mm -hmm. We'd start a I grassroots. If you want public comment, right, right. they've got it. <laughs> Carolyn, can I ask a question that relates a little bit to what was said up there, but that when I was running around looking at some of these areas I was thinking about, and that is that area in, in, in uh, Resid urban residential, city, that area over there where they're concerned of the density. Yep. What, if anything, do we know about in, in changing the density of some, of, or hoping to change the density of some of these areas is the impact that would happen on the public schools? Because some areas are probably not going to have a lot of children come into them, but I would suspect that area might very well have and I'm just curious about what kind of integration in doing this we've had with what's there in the schools. And I know some of these schools are kind of too close together from an ideal point of view. And I don't know how empty or how open how open they are. So I was just curious about Well, it's, it is interesting. We've got, we know that we're declining enrollment for schools. So our, our school population, school age population is going down. Um, there's also been discussion about the fact that maybe at some point we're going to have to close one of the elementary schools. And so when this came up, I think the last budget crisis, there was, you know, I think Sort of my impression from the outside was sort of seeing a battle between, you know, would it be which elementary school would it be? Right. Is it Bridge Street? Is it Ryan? Ro so I think particularly in Bridge Street, which is um, Where are surrounding the neighborhood, and I was going to pull up um, Ward Three the map. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was um, thinking about. That's why really I was is um, you know one is I th think we're pretty. Sh sure that the school can handle more students. Um, the other issue is we've also seen that actually um, in the urban areas it's really th there are fewer school-aged children than there are in some of the um, suburban neighborhoods. Um, and we, you know, some of this is we did do a study um, and it's actually on our website for instance, Ice Pond Road has more students per house than some of the, a lot of the units, you know, in the, closer into town. Um, but I, th so I don't, I don't think there's an issue uh, r as it relates to impact on the schools. I was just curious. Yeah, I mean, the area, you know, Pomeroy Terrace, Bridge Street, and Henry Street Yes, are all right there, walkable. You know, the whole sustainability plan is about allowing flexibility and right. new units in those neighborhoods. And I think it would be certainly a much bigger step backwards by rezoning to URB those neighborhoods um, just because the lots on Henry Street are deeper. I mean, they're really, we're talking about four or five lots right here. Um, and, and I certainly heard that at the Ward 3 meeting, um, a concern from these people right here on Henry Street about these mm -hmm. deeper lots right here. Some of the back, I mean, it's unknown how buildable these are anyway because some of this, there's some wet areas mm -hmm. back in here. But how would you build them when they have no free? You want to put <coughs> one, I mean, you could put, a, I guess, a cluster? Well, if, if the zoning changes, then, you know, we're talking about 3,000 square feet, but you could put so many other, you know, remember the cap is open space and parking. Right. So if you have a single family house now, you could potentially add two or three units um, and provide parking. Right. But they would really have to be a deep structure 
not necessarily a wide structure. To, so in that way, I think you could really scale, you know, scale it and mass it so that it's not really that visible from the street. But I think, again, it becomes change in the neighborhood. So people over here who, that have smaller lots where there's not probably going to be, I mean, maybe one or two units are concerned about the difference right over here. But this is sort of a unique block, but at the same time, we're talking about the dike here, easy yeah. access, open space. It's right next to downtown. Yeah. It's actually the kind of place that the Sustainable Northampton Plan is saying, this is where, if we're going to put new units, this right. makes sense to do it. Sort of like North Street. Um, right. Is it sort of a NIMBY kind of a thing? Yes. Then, then pretty much? I think there is a there is concern from by people about the change that will happen and basically what I've been hearing in these last couple of neighborhood meetings is the worst case scenario I mean what's envisioned is the worst case scenario and all happening at the same time right. next year right at once right right and um, I mean Northampton historically has never evolved that way it's been a little bit here a little bit there and you know obviously if in one neighborhood if one house expands into five units the person right across the street is going to say you know my life my whole life has changed because this single family house has now gone to five units but when you take take a step back obviously it's a very tiny tiny percentage of the entire mm -hmm. neighborhood population or even obviously citywide population Okay. Thank you. Yeah, people got pretty excited about the one that's built next to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember what the name yeah. of the thing is. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of interested to revisit that and see what the impact on the neighbors and stuff is. And well, I mean, people still talk about it as being ugly, I think. Um, maybe not the people who live there, but <coughs> I think a lot of it, too, is that presence that all the parking is in front. You go in and, I mean, that's part of it, I think, is you don't have sideways right. development with parking, you know, yeah. extending in front like that. Um, well, it's shoehorned in there, no doubt about right. it. But it, it's ideal density and it's walking distance and there are a lot right. of things in favor of it. Right. I mean, and there are obviously, even if you could shoehorn a development in there, there are other ways you could rearrange the parcel and the units to make it less... Um, I guess noticeable and make it blend in better. But we're not. But those are also design it for them. That's the problem. But except these design. I mean, that's where we got to the parking standards by saying, you know, look, if you're going to have to have this much parking, that really does have an impact to a neighborhood. So you mm -hmm. need to think about how you're going to orient it. So I think if we had those standards, that potentially that project could be different. Right. Mm -hmm. And that project was built with the existing zoning. I mean, that's right. So you know. That, <laughs> nothing we're doing would have allowed it because it was already allowed right right so we're actually making zone. it better it would, yeah it would yeah. Be better yeah okay we've reached our nine o'clock curfew um <laughs> we still have some minutes from i had i, I had, we had the minutes of uh, december 13th which came in the package for the t tonight's meeting but i don't think we approved I still had uh, the minutes, three sets of minutes, or not two. I had it that you guys looked at those in my notes from last time. Because Anne had a comment that she was there when I had marked her app. Yeah. Jen was doing the chairing and you were sitting. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Need a motion then on the minutes of December 13th. I move mean, we approve the minutes of December 13th. Second. It goes so fast. Oh, I can't. I wasn't here. Does that matter? <laughs> no. Yeah, you can move the approval. Yeah. All in favor. Who did the second? Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. We second. didn't talk about billboards yet. <laughs> yeah. Looking at that. I'm against them. <laughs> I'm for it. All in favor. Uh, one more one more thing